Today's second job is to install the M4 COB bulbs that I talked about earlier in my segment here. I do like jobs that I can sit on a little stool and work on. Can't beat that with a stick. What I got here is some alcohol for cleaning. I already opened up the package for the light bulb. You can see that this is the chip on board light bulb that has a pigtail with uh, one particular type of connector that may or may not be used by somebody. But then I can connect up to this, this connection so that I have this bayonet mount, which is what I have. Or if I would have had a regular automotive style of a connector, I could plug this into the pigtail and I would adapt to that. Now, what I did was I went ahead and cleaned this plate with alcohol, but you can see that that plate has a dimple in it. And that inconveniently will screw up taking the adhesive off on this COB chip on board plate and allow it to affix onto that plate because it will be gripping essentially hardly any rubber. Now one of the beauties of this design is that they go through and spend the extra money to put that secondary plate on there to keep the heat off that tape so that tape doesn't self-destruct itself after you use the light for a while. But you couldn't expect M4 to make this to work on something like this. So you have to be a little flexible. So I'm gonna show you a little trick that I'm gonna try and uh, I guess we'll see by the time the installation is done to see if it was a good idea. Let's go. When you have an RV, I advocate to carry a roll of a turnabon tape. This tape that I carry, and I keep it underneath my bed uh, in the storage compartment so that it is always air conditioned and kept fresh. This is a 50 foot roll, uh, six inch wide. What I'm gonna do to beef up the back of this chip on board and to basically make the part on the back where it sticks onto my aluminum plate thicker, I'm gonna put three layers of this tape and it's gonna be one stacked on top of another. This is my final installation. Not exactly pretty, uh, but it is quite thick, very squishy. I have 100% contact on the top one inch there. If anybody has used a turnabon tape, they know how unbelievably sticky it is. So there's, there's zero chance that this light is gonna fall off there. And in fact, it's got such a cushy, spongy attachment now. It's like having its own McPherson struts going down the road. Uh, I put it down a little low so that I can take this socket out if I had to uh, for whatever reason um, and this is what it's going to look like when it's on substantially brighter than the old light was I'll uh, take a picture of it at night so you can see and then this bulb cover just slips back on and that's what I'm gonna have well I've got one more to do and probably by the time I'm done doing the third or fourth one I'll be real good at it this is the light in my wet bay and I was actually the most uh, interested in doing this one I put a cool white bulb in here to replace the regular 921 bayonet that was here. 
I uh, utilized the same technique where I put one strip of Internabon tape down first and then I double backed, kind of like in art class when you learned how to take masking tape and turn it into a loop and double backed the Eternabon, which is super sticky. I mean, I could hardly get my fingers off it, so that's not going anywhere. And stuck it in this fixture, and we'll see how it is at night. This is how it looks now. Uh, I'm thinking it's gonna be quite a bit lighter. And when you're fooling around with this stuff late at night, there's a lot of times you really wanna have decent light. The last light that I'm going to fix today is this one in the top. It takes a 921 bayonet bulb and this is the only one of the chip on board ones that I've been installing that I'm going to actually put a warm light in because it is our entry door porch light we like the softer look it's not a task light like this one in the past that i did over here and when i get on a computer i'm going to show you the one that i put in there i put actually a special one in here that was supposed to be the brightest when i first started traveling i had a little giant ladder that i would at first put in the honda along with all the other junk which is really uh, a lot messier than it usually is now because we're not traveling so we just throw stuff in there because we have tons of room because the bikes aren't in there but that little giant ladder always seemed to be uh, inconvenient to take out and was very heavy for me so after a while I took it out of the Honda and I hung it on the back of the coach when I hung it on the back of the coach I had special brackets that I put on the top of the ladder and then about four rungs down, I had brackets on the bottom of the ladder. And I actually had it spaced with a little cushioning so that the load was divided between the top and the bottom of the ladder. But what I found was that every single time I wanted to go into the engine compartment to look at something and you know press the button here and pull it up, I had to move this ladder up and because the ladder had a ladder on it, I was basically uh, turning it into a five minute job every time. And I found that I was neglecting my engine. And the day I made that decision that that was a poor trade off, I stopped carrying that ladder. This is the ladder I bought an extend and climb, extend plus climb ladder that I bought to replace my A-frame style little giant ladder. It gets the job done. I bought the most heavy duty one I could. Uh, you have to be very careful when you're extending this ladder that when you extend these pipes that this mechanism here clicks and shows this green button. So you'll notice I just clicked one in place and I got a green button there. I bought with this ladder, I bought this extension here. That's probably why I don't have the green button because I didn't have it folded right. This rubber thing here uh, is good to protect when you're going against things. Um, I can say that if you're strong enough and you have the room to carry a little giant A-frame, I do like that ladder better but it's just too heavy and I can't carry it around I'm gonna hurt myself you can see that I've got all the green buttons energized now like I said I had bought the highest capacity highest quality best reviewed I have that down in our Amazon store if you're interested to see this exact model that I bought I'm 200 pounds I've been careful on this ladder and I don't feel that it's uh, flimsy it's the porch light was the most straightforward installation. You can see it fits really nice and the wires are tucked in good. The board is very sturdy. It's on a nice spongy uh, tape mount with my Eternabon tape. I am really happy that I have that. Uh, 
like I said, I always recommend that people carry that if you get a leak on the fly. And now when I saw how nice that worked, I'm gonna be using that tape for other things. It is, it is really bomb proof and very, very insanely sticky. Here's the M4 products uh, website. And if you go to the LED RV retro fit bulb screen and you scroll down to the Elite Series M4's best and brightest, that's what I had ordered in the past from. I've ordered some of these regular style bulbs for some of my wall sconces. But what really got me to this uh, website the first time was this particular panel. I wanted the absolute brightest bulb that I could put in there and they uh, achieved that by actually flattening the bulb out and it's called a COB or a chip on board. Now they have enough LEDs stuffed on this thing that to keep it from getting too warm they have it encircled in an aluminum frame and you can see that it was very well reviewed with 55 people reviewing it. It has multiple adapters that allow you to put it on a base mount or a wedge mount, um, basically allowing you to replace and adapt any of these styles bulbs. Uh, that's one of the things that I like about this website as crowded and um, busy as this website is, it pretty much tells you everything you need to know. This is a very important thing here and probably the reason why they have the return policy that's fairly strict is that there's probably a lot of people that don't take the time to really figure out the color of the bulb that they want and then they've got all sorts of open packages that would be floating around. This chart here and these pictures that show the different Kelvin ratings from the warm light, the natural light, and the cool white pretty much tell you what you're going to be getting into. I don't believe that they make this anymore in a lot of the different colors. I see that they only make it in the cool white now and if you want a different color you have to actually go to a different style that they make. Let's see if we can find that. Over on the left hand side here you can see I've dialed down to plate style LEDs. This I believe is their latest and greatest. These are one and a half times as bright as what you're taking out. That aluminum one was twice as bright as what you were taking out. On my last order here, I ordered uh, a number of the cool whites and one of the warm white. The warm white one I ended up putting in by our patio. Now, if I pick on one of these, like the cool white one here, you can see that they tell you everything you need to know here. Uh, light itself is $10.99 each. I believe if you place an order of about $60, which doesn't take long to do, you buy six lights, you're there, then shipping is free. It's got the same pictures here that you can rotate through. You can see that you have the uh, different adapters, the different colors. One of the things that I liked about this company's product is the fact that it has this lower plate separating the electronics from the light that's making all of the heat. So what little amount of heat an LED does make and the electronics make, if you don't separate them by some distance, what you're doing is you're cooking the glue all the time and then it would tend to fall off the upside down or horizontal surface that you have it on. So it's just one more level of quality that's uh, built into this thing. All of the dimensions that you need to concern yourself with, if you've got a problem with the thickness, you can see that this thickness is 3 eighths of an inch and it would be even thicker if you had to put some additional double back tape on to accommodate your fixture like I uh, did in my installation. Um, what I want to point out up here is that I've bought from this company enough now that I've actually applied for their affiliate program. If you would buy anything from uh, M4 products, I would make a small commission on it. 
and I will include a discount code for you to use to buy uh, your lighting through M4. You would behoove yourself to uh, count up the lights you're going to need so that you pop over the $60 threshold so that your uh, shipping is for free. This is the exciting conclusion to me installing the bulbs. We're not professional photographers, so we're not able to put the good before and after here. But what we got here is this is the light bulb that I installed, the chip on board, that is nominally 150% brighter than the 921 style bayonet bulb that I put in. So 150% brighter. I can tell you that having looked at this light for three years, this is definitely a lot brighter. You'll also notice the color, it's kind of a yellowish cast, and that's a cool, uh, excuse me, that's a warm white. That was done on purpose. We're in a pretty brilliantly lit parking lot here at State Fair Park, so this is a very unfair test. Over here, Sue. So this bulb here, I put in about two years ago. This is the one that's got the aluminum frame. This also is a chip on board, but this is the one that was 200% or twice as bright as the 921 style bayonet bulb that I took out. I would have put this style in the front, except this style is no longer made in a warm white. So once again, this is a poor example because I'm in the darkest part probably of where we're parked. We're right underneath a tree here. But this is the 921 style bayonet bulb that I replaced in the front generator compartment that I'll show you about. This is obviously the engine compartment. I was going to put a chip on board in here, but this fixture, as I was working on it, I could see was unreliable. And since I'm basically taping in the bulb with the Eternabon tape, and it's so sticky that once I put that ten or eleven dollar bulb in there, I'm not going to be able to easily get it out. So I'm going to I'm going to be at Newmar in another couple weeks. I'm going to buy one of these fixtures. I'm going to put the new fixture in before I put the nice bulb in. But this gives you an idea on how this dinky little bulb here would help you. You can imagine that if you had a real issue here where you had to work on a belt or something like that, you'd have essentially no help and you have to always make sure you carry your own lights with you. So this is more of a feel good thing. Let's go check out the generator bulb, honey, and I'll show you how different that is. This light is probably more of a useful one to have because there are times where if all of a sudden during storm or you're somewhere where you really have to use your generator and for whatever reason these circuit breakers here had tripped on you and your generator's not working it's always nice to come out here at a moment's notice before you find your headlight or whatever to be able to see if this is configured right so this is the difference in the brightness of that stinking little 921 bayonet bulb and this chip on board you can see that even without doing a scientific analysis this is easily 150 percent of that bulb so uh, this is the cool white in intentionally a very white bright uh, natural colored light for task lighting let's turn this off and look at the chip on board on the wet bay and then we can uh, end this video with some really nice dramatic music like I usually do and we'll fade off into the sunset. Oh wow. my God. So if Newmar had did it really right, they probably put two or three lights in here, certainly at least two. You probably would put one in the door to light up what you're kneeling on and what you're doing here because trust me it's not always nice where it's asphalt with a fifi you're a nothing of, but black right now we need light i turn on my chip on board oh what a difference and, yeah Darling. yeah but you can see it's all dark underneath here and trust me there's times where you want to see there because for whatever reason sometimes i want to look and see what the level of my tank is so what i usually do is i usually have a flashlight in here and if I was working with the business end of this stuff here and I want to see how I'm doing I might light up my clear thing here uh, just to make sure that the tank is emptying and what's coming out of there is what I think is coming out of there and all that kind of stuff oh but uh, much better 
a nice color very, very much recommended to switch any of your bayonets to this uh, chip on board because it's a nice flat profile easy to put in there painless you have to make sure you have the polarity right there's a couple times I put it together I plugged it in and it didn't work and you literally unplug it flip it 180 and plug it back in and it works so like if you had everything all glued together and then you tried it and it didn't work make sure you test it the uh, polarity wise that it's okay